Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Polaris, think outside. Can-Am, time for some off-road living. And by Yamaha, revs your heart. We're definitely at a place in history where people are looking for value. I don't mean cheap or low quality. What I'm talking about is something that delivers big at a reasonable price point. Now based off the R-Max 1000 engine, this Wolverine is a totally new beast and is designed around delivering maximum usability, maximum fun, and at a cost that's pretty shocking in an industry that seems to be creeping higher and higher MSRP price tags onto nearly everything that we look at. Yamaha is re-evaluating and offering far more for less. Patrick Biolsi, Yamaha's ATV and side-by-side -side testing manager, will help us understand this further. The Wolverine platform has been exceptionally successful uh, because it delivered the three C's, comfort, capability, and confidence, and that's what it continues to do to this day. Now for me, I wanted to know what the big differences were between the R-Max and the new Wolverine X2 1000, because when it comes to comparisons, this is what everyone is asking. The differences between the R-Max and the Wolverine X2 1000, let's start with the engine. The engine is exactly the same. There is no difference between the two vehicles whatsoever. Um, the clutch setting is a little different, 20 gram weight from the R-Max 4. That's the only difference between the R-Max 2 and the Wolverine X2 1000. When it comes to the suspension, there's a lot of different things that we're doing with the suspension, but really trying to achieve a lot of similar goals and targets, but doing it for a different customer. The, su the customer that's looking for the X2 1000 is really driving in a lot different terrain, tight East Coast woods trails, for example, there's different characteristics we're getting from a styling standpoint. It's a lot more compact body. The visibility is exceptional in the X2 1000. The R-Max has a much different style. It's a little bit broader shouldered, a little bit taller. So you don't have quite the same level of visibility in the R-Max as you do with the X2 1000. But from a suspension standpoint, the X2 1000 has a huge amount of travel for its 61 inch track width, which is really exceptional. SAC ZF shocks versus the Fox QS3 and Fox IQS system on the R-Max. That's a key difference but we're really looking to achieve a lot of the similar targets of exceptional low speed comfort, small rocks, tree roots, stutter bumps that we get on the East Coast, trail whoops, mountain trail whoops that we get in the Western US, uh, decomposed granite really whoops out. So providing a high level of performance uh, in the Western US and the Eastern US is really challenging. So having that much suspension really helps us do that. The travel is really important. And the suspension travel numbers on the X2 are actually really impressive. It's 13.3 inches up front and it's 15.6 inches out back. You gotta remember, that's only like one inch lower than the R-Max. This is really impressive. The other thing that's impressive is while the R-Max has Fox shocks, this one has Saks piggybacks. Saks makes a great shock. I've always loved them. And this one is a piggyback with full adjustability, but then it also has a threaded spring preload collar. So you can really tune this vehicle to ride exactly the way that you want. One key difference is wheels and tires. Both trying to deliver an exceptional amount of sidewall durability, comfort, damping character from our tire, but we're matched to different concepts. You know, with the R-Max 2, we've got the Maxxis Carnivore, and we also have the GBC Dirt Commander 2.0. Great tires, 30-inch square setup. We've got a 28-inch square setup on the Wolverine X2 1000, which again, gives you that convenience of having a square setup being non-directional. The convenience of carrying a spare that's the same size, all four corners, that's really easy to deal with and really uh, something customers are looking for. Um, high ply ratings, eight ply and six ply are really something that customers tell us they look for. I know it's just a number, but on the trail, having the right amount of sidewall is really important. When you pinch a tire between a rock or a trail obstacle and the rim, having enough sidewall is just as important sometimes as having a thick sidewall on a tire or a high ply rating. So having a 14 inch wheel is really important with a 28 inch size. So we wanted to make sure we had enough sidewall to pinch between the wheels and tires. Uh, having a Maxxis Bighorn, the OG spec, if you will, it's a thicker tread. It's a larger tread block overall. It provides great traction all over the United States. Uh, here in the East, uh, mud, rocks, uh, slippery rocks, uh, something you don't see as much in the Western US. Again, decomposed granite, sandy trails. The Bighorn uh, provides a great level of traction, a wide variety of conditions. That's the reason we delivered it on the X2 1000. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Hercules Tire. Ride on our strength. Now I hope that you're seeing that this new Wolverine is a really formidable vehicle. 
But it's not just engine and suspension that takes its cues from the R-Max that make it so formidable. The interior is something that needed a look at, and they took a whole lot of style features from the R-Max and threw it into this Wolverine. We're gonna talk about the differences and the similarities on the interior between the R-Max and the XT1000. Similarities, we've got the same great six-point adjustable seatbelt. You know, it's a three-point harness, and it has a six-position adjustable anchor point with no tools. Uh, really easy and convenient to achieve a nice, comfortable level for a wide variety of driver sizes, preferences, and that's on the driver and passenger side. Uh, of course, we have an adjustable handhold on both vehicles, but the adjustment style and the handhold are slightly different between those two. One key thing that's the same is the roominess in the cab. A lot of people, if you had a 2018 through 2020 model X2 or X4, the cab's a little bit different than what we have on the 2021 model and later X2 850 and the X2 1000 and the R-Max. We've got the same amount of roominess. Seats about a half inch back from those early X2s and X4s. The throttle pedal and brake pedal were pushed forward and the, the angles were changed to, again, to give it more room and make it more comfortable for a wider variety of people. People that maybe weren't as flexible in their ankles and their feet, those uh, has a nicer, more relaxed leg angle. The door uh, latch position was changed compared to those early X2s. It's the same as what's on the R-Max. The cab is actually interchangeable. Uh, the hard cab enclosure accessory, just to show you that they are the same. It's the same front doors on an R-Max 2 as what's on a X2 1000 when it comes to the dimensions, getting in and out of the vehicle, ingress and egress, they're the same between an R-Max and an X2 1000. So that's a key uh, similarity. And probably one of the biggest ones that we brought over from the R-Max were the soft touch points on the door skin. And then of course on the center console, hit you in all the, great, the right spots as far as providing you a nice comfortable spot uh, on rough terrain, all day riding, really exceptional amount of comfort on the X2 1000. Same as with the R what's on the R-Max. And what Pat means by the soft touch points are these cool little rubber inserts that they've put into places inside of the cab where your elbows rest against the door pocket or your knee rests against the center console. They did this in the R-Max. Luke and I both loved it. Anybody who's ridden one thinks it's the best thing ever. They're the only people in the industry doing it, and I'm so glad to see that they're putting this onto more of their vehicles. I hope in the future it's on everything because this is really important when you're out for a long day's ride. Just makes it so much nicer. One more key difference, of course, is the vehicle size. You know, a 64 inch track width on the R-Max, 61 inch on the Wolverine X2 1000. The wheelbase is a little shorter, and uh, overall, the vehicle is a slightly smaller uh, overall size. It's really maneuverable. Again, focused on a different concept from a customer standpoint, what they're looking for, a little bit smaller, more compact vehicle overall. And Pat hits on one of the standout features here of the X2. The fact that it is a slightly smaller vehicle than the R-Max, and that's not a bad thing. It really makes it more versatile on the East Coast trails, tighter trails, and areas where you wanna have better sight lines of the trails, maybe even for newer riders. I really appreciate the smaller stature of this vehicle, and don't get me wrong, it's not all that much smaller, but it's enough that you get better sight lines from behind the steering wheel. One of the most important things that didn't change is Ultramatic, on command, and of course, our EPS system. We feel like the 10-year belt warranty, like uh, again, it's so important to our R-Max customers and all of our Wolverine customers really value that level of CVT durability. And that has not changed between the X2 1000 and the R-Max. The on-command system, again, functions the exact same way. Again, providing that really consistent, predictable sense of traction you get from the front end, whether you want four-wheel drive limited slip, two-wheel drive, or a true front differential lock, which again is what our customers tell us they want. Um, that hasn't changed at all between the X2 1000 customer and the R-Max customer. They're still looking for that. And of course, that balance for our EPS system, our electric power steering system, most important thing is that balance of positive and negative feedback. We delivered that with the X-T1000, even though it has a different chassis, different steering rack, different tie rods, the same focus on balance between positive and negative feedback was there. The real hallmarks of Yamaha off-road vehicles. You could say that the DNA of Yamaha stays true on this new Wolverine. And that's something that's gonna continue to deliver after you purchase it from the dealer showroom. When you take it home, these are the things that are gonna be standouts for you going down the road. This is a true Yamaha product and it's gonna deliver the way you expect a Yamaha to do so. When we were developing the Wolverine XT1000, we worked with our product planning team to understand the target customer. What is this customer looking for that's not uh, looking for an R-Max? Besides, of course, the price and the value that you're getting with the Wolverine XT1000. And we really work with our product planning team to understand what those benefits are that they're gonna feel on the trail and apply that to our development process. 
Again, we spoke, focused on suspension comfort, uh, suspension travel. What does that give you? It gives you contact to ground feeling, gives you performance at higher speeds. Of course, engine power, but not just a ton of engine power. We wanna make sure it's very manageable, making sure the response is just right in a wide variety of conditions. That's something this Wolverine XT1000 customer is looking for. A lot of power, but of course delivered in a certain way that covers a great variety of terrain all over the United States. Again, the suspension is capable all over the United States with all that travel, with all the adjustability, uh, with the piggyback reservoirs, that really is what they're looking for. And that's what you get on the trail. Great comfort in the cab, getting in and out of the vehicle, same great level as the RMAX. We uh, put a couple of key features in there, like the touch points on the uh, door skin and on the center console, uh, make it very roomy, make it very comfortable, but at a different level than the RMAX, this customer value those things slightly differently. There's a lot of great accessories available for the Wolverine X2 1000. Uh, make sure you go to yamahamotorsports.com to figure out what fits your X2 1000. There is a great uh, crossover between the RMAX and the X2 850. But one of the keys from our perspective, from uh, the testing department, is we test our accessories just like we do the unit. We put our, uh, these vehicles through all the same durability tests. We focus on driving on real trails uh, for extended periods of time and using them like the customer is going to use them. That's something that uh, I think a lot of other accessories out there can't say. And it's something we spend a lot of time and effort on and we're very proud of and make sure our accessories meet people or even exceed their expectations when it comes to durability, uh, just like the unit. Now, if you want more information on the all new X2 1000 Yamaha Wolverine, make sure you stop by your local dealership so you can see one in person. And I know you're not gonna be disappointed when you do that. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Princess Auto, make it work. So today's gonna be a little bit different. Yes, I am still testing an off-road side-by-side and while my words about it may speak loudly, it's gonna be mostly silent. In fact, it's actually running right now. For today's test ride, I'll be using the 2024 Polaris Ranger XP Kinetic Ultimate. This is the all new electric design from Ranger and while you can get a less expensive premium model with a smaller battery and therefore less range, this Ultimate touts 110 horsepower electric motor producing 140 pound feet of torque, which is twice the torque of any other utility side-by-side -side of this category. And keep in mind, the Ranger 1500 only has 104 foot-pounds of torque. It's got a massive 29.8 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery and it'll give us up to 80 miles of range if you drive like your 90 year old grandmother. Now it's important to realize before we dive in much further that this Ranger is no less of a Ranger just because it's electric. It might take a plug instead of a jerry can to fill it up, but this thing doesn't want any of your no eating on the white leather Tesla seats BS. This is a Ranger, it's ready to work just as hard as any other. And that means a 1,250 pound class leading box capacity and 2,500 pounds of towing with a low range, just like the gas version. Up front, you're still gonna find the place for an electric winch. And yes, the front bumper even accepts the quick attach mounts for the Polaris Glacier plows. Like I said, the only thing this Ranger gives you less of is range. But even that isn't the big issue that we all thought it would be because really, how many of you in your Rangers go out and ride more than 80 miles in a day? After doing a big survey, we found out not too many of you. And keep in mind, Polaris gives you a three-year electric powertrain warranty and a massive five-year battery warranty to keep your mind at ease. Now, the Kinetic does have three power modes, which act like the drive modes on the regular Rangers. That is Eco Plus, Standard, and Sport. And what these do is help you to either conserve power or likewise go out and have some fun. And let me tell you, if you want to let loose, just like the 1000 XP, you sure can. Watching the on-screen gauge go into lightning mode means you're ready for liftoff. The tires spin, the dirt flies, and I realize quickly that electric has many benefits. The suspension is set up for the added weight of the battery packs, and it never feels too heavy or uneasy. Drifting a nice power slide or cruising the open trail is as confident as the gas versions with the added benefit of hearing so much more than you ever have before. I mean, seriously, let's stop for a second and listen. So we've had the Ranger Kinetic for a little bit of time now, and I've been able to put some miles on it. I've used it around my house. 
I've had it at my house actually, selfishly, because I wasn't a huge believer in electric vehicles. I just thought, you know what, this isn't something we need in this industry. Lo and behold, my opinion of this has completely changed the more I use it. And trust me, I am a petrol burning, oil using son of a gun. I, I love gas powered vehicles of all kinds and I don't want to see them go anywhere, but there is definitely a place for kinetic and electric side by sides. We had some family over the other day. They're not from the country, they're from the city. We went out, there was three of us in here. As we're running down the trail, seeing all these cool things, I'm having a conversation at regular volume, discussing all the cool things about the area. And when I got back, I thought to myself, that was so quiet. We were able to just have a regular conversation. I know you're not gonna buy something so you can have a conversation inside the cab, but it's really impressive how quiet this is and how much else you are able to take in, especially when you're riding with somebody else. This is a workhorse, it's a Ranger, but we know that it does everything that a Ranger does. In fact, going down the road, this thing takes off like, well, like a missile. It is incredibly fast. Probably one of the fastest side-by-sides I have ever been in. Nothing, nothing held back, even the two liter. I'm not sure, I kind of want to challenge this thing against the two liter and see what happens. But at the end of the day, I just, I really enjoy the seamlessness of this thing. I mean, right now, this vehicle's running. I'm shifting from forwards to reverse. You didn't hear the transmission clunk. You didn't hear any, you know, issues there. You didn't hear any notchiness or whatever. I just, I, I think this is a totally different way to experience side-by-side -side riding. Really solid product. I love it. Right now, I have put on, uh, what have I put on? Over 50 kilometers. My battery is at 57% still, and I have run this thing hard. The Ranger Kinetic, Yes, it has some drawbacks with getting power to this vehicle if you use it. Besides that, there is nothing, and I mean nothing, this thing doesn't do better than its gas-powered counterparts. I actually never realized how much noise the tires alone make at high speeds. But keep in mind, any fun had in sport mode is gonna reduce your 80 miles max range quite a bit. However, a nice built-in center pod gauge shows you battery life left, as well as an estimated range available. Dirt Tracks has been sponsored by Kawasaki. Let the good times roll. MBRP Performance Exhaust, built for the victory lap. And by Mad Ramps. Leave the trailer and go. Truthfully, we need to look at the battery as not a negative or a trade off, but look at this Ranger as a completely different line of Ranger because going electric has its benefits as well. Now the obvious are areas that are noise sensitive or the inner city yuppie districts that believe drilling for oil is worse than lithium mining. The city councils who buy these are already imagining the electrified change and visualizing themselves running through fields of wheat and white button up shirts and flowing floral dresses with puppies licking their faces and the sun ever shining on them because now they can plug in a ranger while watering the gardens in downtown Metropolis. But the rest of us can see the benefits, like becoming the silent hunter on the way out to the tree stand. And when you get behind the wheel of the Ranger Kinetic and you turn it on or power it up or electrify it or whatever you call it, you realize that there's a whole lot else that you hear when a gasoline engine is not involved. Creeping through the woods, the only sound is a slight hum from the electric motor and the crunching of sticks under the wheels. The wind blowing through your helmet seems more real, the smell of nature stronger, and the anticipation of getting into the tree stand as real as it has ever been. And this is where the Kinetic really shines, and probably why it's available in Polaris Pursuit camo, because there has never been a side-by-side -side built that's this hunter-friendly. Now I know a lot of skeptics exist out there, but keep in mind this Ranger still has 14 inches of ground clearance, 29 inch Pro Armor X-Terrain tires, and 10 inches of suspension travel all the way around. So hauling out your harvest and you and a buddy or two isn't a problem, nor is hooking up to the two inch hitch receiver in a bush buggy and dragging out a quartered up bull moose. And there must be quite a few who can already see the benefits because this 2024 Kinetic version is already sold out. Now, if you're not interested in the hunting aspect, there's still a lot to like about the Kinetic when it comes to work or play. You gotta keep in mind that yes, this is at the top of the price spectrum, 
but on the other side, it is jam-packed full of included features. From the 12-volt power port to the built-in stereo system and the Ride Command 7-inch display, there's a lot here. Navigation, optional cameras, even the ability to plug in your game camera card to view on the screen. There's LED lights everywhere to save power, but also look really high-end. The factory-installed 6-kilowatt charger will keep you charging for years to come and includes a household 120-volt and 240-volt plugs depending on what you have available. Now, before we got the Kinetic, I didn't really know if I would like it. I mean, I tested the old Ranger EV, which was in a smaller chassis with smaller wheels and much less performance and range. But when it comes to this Ranger XP Kinetic, I gotta tell you, Polaris did their homework and they delivered exactly what they said, which is a no-compromise, full-featured Ranger electrified.